Heaven oh everyone. I woke up this morning with a very strong download which I wanted to record immediately and bring to you before it dissipates from my mind. I actually slept last night at my partner Dean's farm and there's no Wi-Fi there. It's very close to the earth. It's a very pure energy and I often have very visionary dreams, uh, deeply healing dreams and I quite often wake up with uh, downloads and insights. And this one is a kind of realization of what's unfolding at the moment. And I wanted to bring it to you, particularly if you are someone who is part of the truth movement, someone who is uh, speaking out, uh, standing up against the system in any shape or form, or has done so over the past, uh, how long have we been going with this, this kind of shit show? Basically 2020, 2021, 2022. So here we are in 2023. So. It's been going on for three years now and I know a lot of people, a growing number of people are awake to what is unfolding and what is going on. I will explain the reason why I say this later in the video, but right up front, I want to say to you that if you are arrested by the police and interrogated, you have a right to remain silent. You have a right to decline legal representation you are innocent until proven guilty, and you do not need to consent to the system. So it's very useful to say, I do not understand, I do not consent, I am exercising my right to remain silent, I'm declining my right to legal representation, and if anyone is sent into you to sit with you, to clearly say, I do not consent, whether that be a legal representative or whether that be some kind of care worker, uh, they may say, well, we need to send a care worker in if you don't understand and trying to get you under the Mental Health Act. I do not consent to your presence. So just to recap, uh, I do not understand. I do not consent. I'm exercising my right to remain silent and I decline my right to legal representation. You are innocent until proven guilty. And in the event that you are charged with any crime, the simple answer is, I require a trial by jury. Now, a lot of people have said to me on this common law um, issue of, well, everyone's, everyone's in the programme, everyone's in the system, so if I have a trial by jury, if I have 12 uh, jury people, they're all gonna find on the, in favour of the system because everyone's been brainwashed. And I'm here to tell you that is simply not the case. I and mean, it was interesting to me because on Saturday, you may be aware that there were a whole spate of news articles which were targeting me personally. Uh, if you look at the comments stream, particularly there was one on the Mail Online, the Daily Mail. If you look at the comments stream, you will see that two thirds of the people there, and I didn't particularly put that out or put the link to that out. This is natural. This is the natural way that things are flowing now you will see that two thirds of the people uh, agreed with the sentiments of anti-vax and Chris Whitty and all of the rest of it, two thirds. You know, this isn't, we're not in the minority anymore, people. People are waking up to what is going on and the system is going to need very soon to grip in and lock down power. Now, let me explain a bit about what is unfolding. Uh, and if you've been following Pam Gregory, you will be aware of this. And I've said it before, and I don't want to get too esoteric on you, but hold the space on this because um, the universe is speaking to us the whole time. And there are some very amazing people who are translating that for us. So that uh, translating. So they are helping us to make sense of what is unfolding. There are... Uh, and we've just been through one, actually, and we have another, I think, four coming. Uh, new moons at one degree, which is a sign of new beginnings, and full moons at 16 degrees of their signs. So we are in a wave now of, of uh, five new moons and five full moons, all at one degree. The new moons are at one degree of their sign, and the full moons are all at 16 degrees of their sign. So number one is the ace. It is the initiating new power of, of new beginnings, the new moons and new beginnings. And full moons are endings and the 16th card in the tarot is the tower. It's the, it's the card of everything collapsing. 
and that tower of destruction can be uh, a physical breakdown of systems. It can also be a mental breakdown of systems when things get too much. But if we're aware of what's going on, a tremendous wave of new beginnings and a tremendous ending, then we can be aware, we can be consciously aware and we can stand strong in our power as everything collapses around us because we don't have to fall into the chaos. We can stand strong in the eye of the storm. And that is very much the year of the rabbit, sits between the tiger and the dragon. It's like a tornado. We've just come through the water tiger year, strong yang tiger energy, which is in water, like a tsunami. The other side of that 2024 is the year of the dragon. It's my year, the year of the wood dragon. I'm 60 years old in 2024. So it's the year of the wood dragon, which is strong yang wood, which is like a huge giant oak tree or redwood tree. But in between the tiger and the dragon, there's two ferocious creatures, the, the tiger being um, like the lion, like the king of the material realm, and the dragon being um, a higher dimensional creature like the unicorn. So just look at the, the coat of arms of the monarchy. It's a lion and a unicorn. So we have a tiger and we have a dragon. So a, a higher dimensional uh, esoteric creature. So in between the tiger and the dragon, strong yang energy, we have the eye of the storm, which is the year of the rabbit, which is what we are going into. And so standing strong in the eye of the storm, we do not have to give in to fight. We do not have to give in to violence. We can just stand strong in the eye of the storm. I do not understand. I do not consent. I'm exercising my right to remain silent. And techniques like meditation, like singing mantras, chanting mantras, very powerful, doing yoga, all of those beautiful things so that we strengthen our ability to stand uh, strong in the eye of the storm and to be still and just to hold our position without falling into the tornado, the, uh, the, the strong energy. So the next thing is just to say this may be the last video that I can film and put out. And if it's taken down by YouTube, you will find it on Odyssey if you need to share it or you need to come back to it. Because it may well be that I do not post anything uh, publicly after I have released this video. It may be that I disappear from social media for a period of time. And if that happens, you will know that the message that I am putting to you in this video uh, has relevance. So I wanna communicate it before uh, anything happens because what I woke up with, the insight, the download that I woke up with this morning is uh, we are going through a period of uh, a challenge. Now, going back to those new moons and those full moons, what this is in truth is a metamorphosis. So imagine that uh, for many years we've been like the caterpillar, just consuming, consuming and consuming media and look watching our soap operas, eating lots, spending lots, consuming, consuming, consuming. And then we went into the cocoon, the whole of the COVID thing, the whole of the lockdown thing, the whole of the you can't speak to anyone, you need to just kind of come back into your house and don't go out of it. It's like a cocoon has been spun. And while we've been in that cocoon, we have been uh, having to go inwards and we have been waking up. And not everyone is awake yet, but a critical mass of people are awakening. They're awakening to the system, the control system and the powers that be. They're waking up to the tyranny and they are waking up to the truth of the way that we have been suppressed, the people have been suppressed by the system. And we are now coming to a point of the metamorphosis. And as the butterfly is breaking out of the cocoon, what it's actually doing is it's strengthening its wings, it's finding its voice, it's getting its power. And so if you help someone out of a cocoon, if you break open the cocoon because you feel sorry for the butterfly, you're actually not, you're doing it a disservice because the butterfly needs to push, it needs to use this, the strength of its wings to get the strength of its wings powerful and those muscles so that when the cocoon breaks, it can fly. 
because we are at that point of metamorphosis where we are about to break through into a different dimension. And so think of the metamorphosis, it's a very, very good analogy for where we are. Now, the way I'd like to explain this is in terms of plant medicine. So you will know if you have ever experienced an ayahuasca ceremony that the shaman will set up the space in a very safe way. The space will be cleansed, everyone is sitting in a circle, um, an altar will be created, the space is smudged and all of that is done before the ceremony starts. And the ceremony starts with opening the seven directions. So calling in the spirit guides, calling in the higher dimensional guides and uh, creating a very sacred space. And then you drink the plant medicine, which is uh, essentially a, a natural tea, which is made up of a fusion of the ayahuasca vine and uh, another ingredient like chacruna leaves or mimosa or acacia, which is what the Egyptians used. So all of these things, um, all of these, these activating agents fuse with the ayahuasca vine and that is what creates um, the, the fusion, which is um, creates the, the highly healing and visionary potent force of the plant medicine. So what happens is you go to the shaman, you drink your plant medicine, you return back to your seat and you basically tune in and you wait for your shamanic journey to start. And then what is happening in the space is that the musicians start to play music. And what they are doing is they are creating harmonic resonance. They're creating a torus field. The chi is forming into a very high vibrational grid of energy. And what that grid, as it gets more powerful, um, what it has the effect of doing is purging through all of the trauma, all of the anger, all of the ego, all of the everything that is is wanting to come out of the darkness to be alchemized, to be seen, to be fully felt and transmuted. And that is why doing plant medicine is deeply healing and deeply transformational. And so what happens is as that vortex of energy uh, is kind of, it's like a macabre, which is spinning very, very fast and it's creating a very, very resonant uh, energy. It's purging through all everything is coming out of the darkness into the light and in the light it's alchemized it's transmuted it's transformed so fully feeling is fully healing so you get to a point in an ayahuasca journey where literally like everyone in the whole room is purging they're being sick and crying and screaming and, and what you're what you're experiencing personally is kind of demons appearing and uh so the, this training to be able to stand strong in the face of the demon and just like, like, you know, thank you for showing up, you know, what are you here to show me? And, and not falling into or going into any fight against that demon. And sometimes you can just, whoosh, you can blow the demon, just use your breath to, whoosh, to, to transform your experience. So it becomes a very, very good training in how to stand strong in your center even though you may be in this crazy, very frightening situation to like really stand strong, breathe, like to blow those visions away and to, it, it becomes a training in how to ride the wave of this, uh, of this false matrix, this illusion. And then what happens is as that energy gets so strong in the room and everyone's purging and everyone's transmuting, what happens is there is a moment where you burst through. You literally burst through the veil of illusion and you get to what lies on the other side, which is like a million volts of pure love and light. And it's like, wow, super powerful, super healing. And it's, it's like you've burst through to the other side. You've gone through the veil, the force field, which locks down, which holds down the kind of illusion of duality, this, this duality delusion. So you get to experience the full force of that Godhead, that source energy. And wow, it's like the most incredible experience. I mean, the first time that happened to me and it took a lot of work to get to that place. Literally, Krishna was dancing in the uh, in the, these higher dimensions and it was just like 
diamond energy. It was like, wow. And it was that experience of experience, the taste of what lies beyond the veil that I think is what brings people back to the medicine. Because when you come back out of that experience and you you then, the key thing is a period of integration, because of course, as, as you come out of that experience, having experienced that, it's like being in a dream. And then you come back into the 3D realm, which is a much lower, heavier density, um, integrating those experiences so that you can then navigate the 3D realm having experienced that light. So you become a point of light within the, within the darkness. And so being able to carry that light. So that's why we keep going back to the medicine because it's practice. It's like practicing. It's like with uh, John Butler at Bakewell Church, uh, practicing meditation. It, it, the more you practice meditation, the more you are able to hold your center and not fall into the drama. No matter how fast that tornado is spinning, no matter how strong those forces get, how how much those demons, how much you're being attacked, you can absolutely stand strong in your center and it doesn't affect you. So it's extremely good training. And, and that is why as we now go into this metamorphosis of these five new moons and five tower of destruction, 16 degree full moons, as we go through this metamorphosis, as the old system is breaking down because Pluto is about to leave Capricorn and it's going coming into Aquarius, which is the sign of the people. Capricorn is about the patriarchy. It's the system. It's the structure. It's the, the it's the Saturn, Saturnine, disciplined control system. It's about to break. That's what's happening. It's about to break. And as it as it breaks down, the powers that be will do everything they can to stop that happening. And so we need to stand very, very strong as that chaos ensues. So these, uh, this ability to stand strong in our centre, just to come back to the centre, to come back to the heart, to be in that place of stillness, to really use those practices that we've been, we've been taught, that we've been learning, meditation, uh, earthing, getting back into nature, doing everything we can to manage our nervous system so we don't have to fall into the fight flight response. We don't have to fall into fight, flight or freeze is the third one. We can hold strong in our centre. We don't have to react. We can, we can respond from that, that place of the being in the eye of the storm. So this is my uh, advice to you uh, and my advice to me and this, the realisation of what is about to happen. Because we're bridging the 3D, which is the, the duality delusion, and we are opening into a higher dimensional way of being on the planet. A lot of people are part of that awakening of consciousness and a lot of people are in resistance to it and they're fighting it and they just want to cling on to the old way of doing things and they want things to get back to normal. But nothing's going to go back to normal. This is a metamorphosis and once this process is complete, there will be a quantum shift in evolution in, in our reality. There will be a different way of being on the planet as this old breaks down. That is what is going on. So this is my message to, to you this morning, and particularly if you are part of that awakening, if you're part of the freedom movement, if you're part of the awakening of consciousness of all of those shamans and light workers who are holding this higher vibration, when you are dealing with the 3D realm, with the powers that be, with the forces that want to stop this process of metamorphosis, they will do everything in their power to prevent this breakdown of the system from happening. So please remember, I do not understand, I do not consent, I'm exercising my right to remain silent, I am innocent until proven guilty. I will post the link to the common law video that I did with Dean in the notes below. If you want to have a look at that, watch it again and again. It's very simple, it's very, very simple that we are born with almost unlimited rights in God's eyes and no one has any authority over us unless we consent to it. And all we are obliged to do is to cause no harm, injury or loss to our fellow man. And who decides on that? Because everyone wants to act as judge and jury and executioner. You did me wrong. You're guilty. No, it goes to 12 
independent people who listen to the evidence and all 12 have to decide that you are guilty. That is your common law right. I require a trial by jury and a trial by jury, the people, the tr that jury can ignore any legislation, any legal statute in arriving at their decision. So it's quite interesting because having dallied with this whole getting involved in the world of politics and the whole wave of response that has been coming, certainly from the freedom movement to me, you can't play a rigged game. And the truth of the situation is that Parliament, which makes all of that legislation and has done for many, many decades, volumes and volumes and volumes of legislation, we don't have to wait for it to be repealed. We don't have to change the government and remove, repeal that legislation. It can all collapse the moment a trial by jury says that they are ignoring it because jury nullification is the great uh, forgotten power of the people. So if you are accused of any crime, I do not understand, I do not consent, I am innocent until proven guilty, I require a trial by jury. Let 12 of your fellow man and woman decide your fate, not the system. I do not understand, I do not consent, I am exercising my right to remain silent, I am innocent until proven guilty, I require a trial by jury. And I know for sure from the response of that Daily Mail article, two thirds of the people responding to that are awake now to what is going on. So all 12 have to find you guilty. All 12 of your fellow man and woman have to find you guilty. So that is why it is so important. I require a trial by jury. Do not let the system decide your fate. I'm not here to spread doom and gloom. I am simply saying there's a storm coming. Put on your raincoat and stand strong, no matter how powerful those winds get. Sending you lots of love, as always. Bye for now.